This definitely was the most honest and open video I've ever made for the internet. And I must confess, I'm a little bit scared of how the 30 people who will see this will react. So, yeah. Excellent! Hey there folks, how's it going? Today's video is going to be a bit less scripted and edited than others because it's more of a rant about all the drama surrounding Stellar Blade. For those who don't know, Stellar Blade is an action game that's stirring a dumb controversy, as usual, whenever an Asian dev makes a game with a female protagonist. People are complaining that she's hot. I know, I know, I'm oversimplifying the situation and there's a whole discussion behind it involving diversity policy activists, journalists trying to tarnish the game's reputation over lack of representation and all this talk about unattainable and unrealistic body standards, even though the protagonist's body is literally scanned from a real woman. And I'm not here to defend the fact that the protagonist is is hot either. To me that's welcome, sure, especially when comparing to how western developers are treating female characters. And yes, there's this aspect of it not being controversy just because she's hot, but because she's sexualized. Lara Croft is hot in the reboots and I don't remember seeing any controversy about that, but when I see Eve from Stellar Blade, for example, with this skin suit that everyone is using in the game, the first thing I think is, damn. And the second is, Okay, she's hot, so what? I always found that Bayonetta's trope of losing pieces of clothing depending on the strength of her attacks really lame and forced, but like, okay, whatever, I'll just go play something else then. But not anymore. Now it's forbidden to not be outraged about everything all the time. If you're progressive, you have to be the social justice warrior about everything. If you're on the other side, you have to fight with the progressive because otherwise X, Y, and Z. And that's what I hate about this whole mess. When did every game release became a political discussion? I don't care if she's hot. I don't care if the character is trans. I don't care if the game team was all people with colored hair. None of this should matter. Although I know that in the deeper parts of this conversation, what lies beyond matters a lot, I just want to state my disappointment that we got where we are, you know? I think what Cabrutus and Grums are doing against DEI is very important and I wholeheartedly support it, but I wanted to speak in a more general concept, you know? I just want to watch a game trailer and get excited about what the game promises me because it seems like a cool game with a great story and a cool characters and fun gameplay. Nothing else should matter in my opinion because anything beyond that seems like it's a super superficial discussion disguised as a deep debate that quickly escalates into good versus evil, right versus wrong, victim and oppressor. And in the case of Stellar Blade, the key word to turn an action game into a stupid political discussion is representation. When did people learn this word, huh? When did this concept become more important than the stories we play? When did people who grew up playing games with the most distinct characters forget all the history that made them love games in the first place to be offended on the internet because a pixel doll doesn't look like you? When did we abandon our love for the works we used as an escape for futility of a bunch of pixels literally looking like you from real life? When did people become so unempathetic to the point of being unable to connect with the human values that the stories these characters who don't look like them represent. Oh, but Stellar Blade doesn't represent real women. Okay, let's ignore the fact that her body model is literally that. Let's also ignore the fact that there are billions of women with bodies similar to hers. Let's ignore the fact that these people, usually progressives, who are saying what should or should not represent a real woman, can even give you a proper answer when you ask them what is a woman. When you were a kid playing Final Fantasy VII and saw Barrett with a machine gun on his arm, you didn't think, whoa, this character makes no sense, I don't have a machine gun on my arm. Or even worse, when you were playing Super Mario on the NES, no one ever thought, whoa, this Italian plumber made by a Japanese guy to sell games to Americans doesn't represent the reality of the body standards of African American women. I never needed to feel physically represented by any character from childhood until now. And whenever someone says what I just said, they immediately go, oh, but you're the standard white guy with blue eyes, you're what society considers handsome because of structural blah, blah, blah. I'm not white, I don't have blue eyes, I don't even look good, and you'll never see me cry because oh my god, where's the representation of an overweight body mustache guy with crooked teeth? I mean, my nickname growing up used to be Blackanese. I'm neither black nor Japanese. <laughs> So if I needed to feel represented physically by a character, I'd be fucked. So I never felt this need. And the reason for it is that I always managed to identify with the characters of the games I liked because of what the story they were inserted in provided me. Some of the characters that influenced me the most were Chrono from Chrono Trigger, Link, Nathan Drake, Lloyd and Luke, 
Joe, Ellie and Abby, Alan Wake and Max Payne. All I see from them arguments about representation seem to come from people who appear to have no purpose in life, who have no passion for anything, who doesn't have any skills or interests, who found in activism the illusion of seeming useful to society because the concept of helping others is something very noble on paper. So they cling to this silver lining with all their might, even though all these people are completely broken inside and incapable of helping others by not helping themselves first, for fear of having to admit that something is wrong with them. And I believe that's why these people cry out so much for literal and physical representation of the characters we play, read and watch, because their ability to interpret cannot go beyond this superficial layer. I talk about more in detail of this concept on my last video, by the way. I never needed to be physically represented by any character because it was with Chrono Trigger that I first felt the feeling of escape that a good story can provide, and it saved my sanity as a child living in a violent home. It was with Link that I learned how bravery and heroism are worthy values of a man, as well as the weight that these values have attached to them. It was with Lloyd that I learned that I must be loyal and protect my friends, and with Luke I learned that I must be responsible for my choices. And to be able to do that, I must look inside and accept my flaws and take the necessary steps to deal with them in order to grow. With Nathan Drake, I learned not to give up on my goals and to deal with things with good sense of humor. With Joel and Ellie, I learned what it is to allow a person into your life to the point of loving and being loved, and with Ellie and Abby, I learned to deal with the hatred I had for a certain person, as well as the negative consequences of not forgiving anyone affect my life. Alan Wake was literally the character that inspired me to become a writer, and Max Payne was the one who sparked a passion for mysteries and police thrillers within me. And as you can see, I don't look like any of these characters. Yet, they all represent a small but complex facet of what a human condition is. And each character will reflect something different in another person in the audience because in our equality as humans, we are completely different from each other in appearance and experiences. And yet, a single character has so many distinct impacts on different people, while the story that was consumed by all of these people is the same. This is what real representation is, and it only happens with good writing. When we talk about movies or games that shaped our characters, that's what we're referring to. Stories that are so good that they transcend the simple character appearance and touch our souls thanks to well done storytelling. And for the 30 people who will watch this, storytelling is my life. I make no exaggerations when I say that I manage to understand how things work, how to talk to people, how to have friends, how to deal with relationships, how to act during adverse situations through stories. It has been like this since the first time I saw that time travel animation in Chrono Trigger with that incredible soundtrack and it turned into something similar and more intense when I started studying narrative techniques and then writing and then mentoring people who also wanted to write. And seeing all this drama from Stellar Blade and how people are discussing it in such a superficial and stupid way about something that clearly wasn't made for them and seeing how these people are outraged it wasn't made for them, as if they were somehow important just for being who they are, and worse still, saying that what wasn't made for them shouldn't exist and that it's wrong, and implying that whoever likes it only likes it because they want to jerk off to it, which ironically goes back to that thing of these people only being able to interpret things superficially. And man, I find this so rancid, so rotten, I feel disgusted when I see this tolerant people having their opinions because they think they're so smart just because they believe they understand politics and that that's the answer to everything. And they feel so enlightened and, well, woke that it gives them the right to tell others what's allowed and what's not. When in reality, all of these people are nothing but empty husks who were educated beyond what their actual intelligence was capable to comprehend. So... That's it. <laughs> that's the video. <laughs> Uh, if you like the video, subscribe to the channel, it's what helps me the most now in the beginning while I still can't monetize it. More videos about or with stories are planned for the future, and by subscribing to the channel you won't miss any updates, alright? This definitely was the most honest and open video I've ever made for the internet, and I must confess I'm a little bit scared of how the 30 people who will see this will react, so... Yeah. <laughs>